Remember all those weird easter egg characters that can be found in practically every single Five Nights at Freddy's installment? You do? Well, what if I told you that a select few of those characters can finally be put to rest? That their story can end today, as you watch this video? Because I believe that I've just discovered a mystery behind some of FNAF's weirdest easter egg characters. And even better, they all go back to the easter egg character who started it all, and why he actually matters if we want to solve the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's. Today, we're going all the way back to the beginning. So strap in folks, because what I'm going to reveal today might just blow your mind. Let's start by talking about that original easter egg character that I brought up, Golden Freddy. Back when the original Five Nights at Freddy's released, people quickly found out that there was a very slim chance that a strange yellow bear would spawn in their office. And even worse, if a player stared at the apparition for too long, their game would crash. Needless to say, the fanbase went crazy over this mysterious being, and things got even better when it was revealed that Golden Freddy, as the community started calling him, was actually important to the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's. Theorists quickly started talking about him, and he swiftly became the king of FNAF clickbait thumbnails. Thanks for that one, MatPat. Scott Coffin, seeing how successful Golden Freddy, who was originally called Yellow Bear, was, decided to add some more easter egg characters in the next game, FNAF 2. And more. And more. Eventually, with so many weird easter egg characters that just couldn't be explained, the fanbase just gave up. To this day, we still don't know who RWQ or Shadow Freddy are. Let's rewind back to Golden Freddy's appearance in FNAF 2. In this game, he appears in two different forms, as Withered Golden Freddy and Sha- Anyway, let's look at this new, or rather old, version of Golden Freddy, Withered Golden Freddy. This version of Yellow Boy is more damaged, with a missing ear and other substantial damage, fitting with the design to the core 4 Withered Anotronics. But if you really think about it, something's off. We know that FNAF 2 happens before FNAF 1. The books in Jeremy Fitzgerald's paycheck, dated 1987, outright confirm this. The reason the FNAF 2 animatronics are withered is because the location they were previously in shut down, and they were left to rot. In FNAF 1, which most likely takes place in 1993, they've been refurbished with new pieces and just generally cleaned up, courtesy of the technicians at Fazbear. But why would anyone fix Golden Freddy? You see, it's pretty much universally accepted that Golden Freddy was one of the two Golden Springlock suits that performed at Fredbear's family diner, the eponymous Fredbear. We know from the training tapes we listened to in FNAF 3 that the Springlock suits were discontinued after multiple simultaneous Springlock failures. This is likely referring to the Bite of 83, where Fredbear's jaw malfunctions, killing one of William Afton's children. After what happened at Fredbear's, all Springlock suits across all Fazbear locations are locked up in the safe rooms just like the Spring Bonnie suit we see in FNAF 3's minigames. So, if the Springlock suits were discontinued around a decade prior to the events of FNAF 1, why would the techs even bother renovating Golden Freddy? Well, the answer is simple. They didn't. No one fixed Golden Freddy. He was the one who put himself back together. Just not the way you'd expect. We know from FNAF 1 that Golden Freddy possesses some kind of supernatural power superior to that of the original animatronics. He can make himself appear and disappear at will. We also know that animatronics possessed by agony can become unstable, as we see with Bonnie and Chica's twitching animations in the west and east hall corners, respectively. It's highly likely that Golden Freddy is the recipient of a ton of agony, the agony of the bite victim, and that of the MCI kid who got stuffed inside the suit by William, Cassidy. So if Golden Freddy has twice the amount of agony that the other animatronics have, it would make sense that he is more powerful, and more unstable than them in some way. Thus, I propose a fairly simple idea. Golden Freddy and Withered Golden Freddy are the same animatronic, but Golden Freddy possesses the ability to change his appearance to match the animatronics around him. In FNAF 1, he's fixed, like the animatronics in that game, and in FNAF 2, he's broken and withered, like the band in that game. Golden Freddy isn't actually being repaired, he's actually changing his appearance to be similar to that of the characters around him. But wait, there's more. It's highly likely that Golden Freddy is appearing in every mainline FNAF game up until Help Wanted. How so? Well, remember those easter egg characters I brought up? That's right, this is where they come into play. Because I believe that some of these characters are actually different manifestations of Golden Freddy. Which ones? Well, let's get right into it. In FNAF 3, there are many weird easter egg characters around the map, but only one of these fits the criteria for being a version of Golden Freddy the weird, shadowy Freddy that rarely appears in the left corner of the office. He's got the same slumped position, similar damage, and that element of randomness Golden Freddy has always had. 
Except this time, he's not hostile. He's just a passive observer watching as the man who murdered him attempts to take the life of another. In FNAF 4, it's pretty obvious. He's almost definitely Nightmare Fredbear. Fredbear is the animatronic that Golden Freddy used to be, so him appearing in the dreams of Michael and Cece, who I believe to be the two people who experience these nightmares, makes sense. Plus, Nightmare Fredbear's voice lines and Ultimate Custom Night match up with this. Let me put you back together, then take you apart all over again. I assure you, I am very real. This time, there is more than an illusion to fear. Let me tear you apart and put you back together again is a reference to the line we see at the end of FNAF 4 Six Nights, a line very heavily associated with the bite victim, who is in turn very heavily associated with Fredbear slash Golden Freddy. I assure you I am very real, and this time there's more than just an illusion to fear, are both referencing how some believe that Golden Freddy wasn't real, and he was an illusion conjured by Michael's mind. Cough, mad pad, cough. These lines could help debunk that theory, if any debunking apart from common sense is necessary. Sorry about that one, Matt Pat. As well as that, Nightmare Fredbear's jump scare sound in this game is radically different to that of the other nightmares. In fact, this sound is much more even and balanced than the others. It's a continuous low-pitched scream. This scream is actually very similar to the scream Golden Freddy emits in FNAF 1. Take a listen. Now, Five Nights at Freddy's sister location, the fifth mainline game in the franchise, is where this gets really interesting. There's a very clear match with Golden Freddy in that game, there's a lot of implications behind that match. So let's talk about it. In Five Nights at Freddy's sister location, there's only really one easter egg character of note, and that character is Yendo. Yendo is a bear endoskeleton similar to Funtime Freddy, who can be found in sister location's third night in the game's custom night. By appearance, he's similar to the endos of the other fun times, with wires that look more like muscle tissues and a stronger build. His eyes are bright yellow and he has what looks like a large screw sticking out of his head, likely representing a hat. He appears in many of the FNAF sister location custom night challenges, including Girls' Night. Scott, why do you do this to us? One other thing worth noting about Yendo is that he has two hands. In Funtime Freddy's blueprint, we see that he only has one, as his other arm is attached to Bond Dog. This will be important later. So, what's the big deal? Why is Yendo important? Well, if you haven't guessed already, it's because he's the strongest candidate for a FNAF 5 stand-in for Golden Freddy. Yendo is a portmanteau of the words Yellow and Endo, pretty self-explanatory. In the files of FNAF 1, Golden Freddy is referred to as Yellow Bear, which, apart from being way creepier than Golden Freddy, matches up perfectly with Yendo's name. As well as that, in Sister Location's custom night, Yendo's mechanics are very similar to Golden Freddy's. He appears at random in your office, completely ignoring the doors, and if you leave him there for too long, he'll kill you in some way. Additionally, he drains your oxygen, which in a way correlates to Golden Freddy, but that's a theory for another day. What I really want to talk about is the reason that Yendo being Golden Freddy is so interesting. The reason I find this correlation worth thinking about is because of some of the implications of this connection. First off, we know that the Funtime animatronics are connected to Remnant and Agony, since we see Afton experimenting on them in the novel trilogy and because of the scooper, which is presented as an endoskeleton extraction mechanism when it's actually an advanced Remnant injector. So since we know the Funtimes are essentially powered by these forces, it would be safe to assume that Yendo would represent those forces in some way as well, which in turn could mean that Golden Freddy, yet again, contains high levels of Agony. The mere presence of Yendo in Sister Rogation is very strange, so I think the Golden Freddy explanation is fitting. Rather than being one of Afton's experiments, Yendo is actually Cassidy inside Golden Freddy, observing Afton's experiments from deep inside the facility. This explains the inconsistencies between Yendo and Funtime Freddy, as well as possibly Golden Freddy's absence in the following minigames, with Cassidy only coming back as a spirit on the fifth night. As for the last entry of the initial six mainline games, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, it's pretty vague. There doesn't really seem to be any animatronic that Golden Freddy could shapeshift into. Initially, I thought he could be a part of Golden Freddy, as some of Yendo's parts could be mixed into Ennard, but I quickly discredited this when I realized that Golden Freddy would have to be around during FNAF 3 for this whole theory to work. After racking my brain for a bit, only one candidate remained. And I know this is going to sound absolutely ridiculous, but hear me out. Nedbear. First off, 
Nedbear and Fredbear are very similar names and they both have similar designs. Additionally, the mediocre melodies are connected to the one you should not have killed, who is almost definitely Cassidy. We know this from the melody's dialogue in Ultimate Custom Night, where a child's voice can be heard in the background of some lines. So it would make sense that Nedbear fit into this category. As well as that, in FNAF 6, if you buy Nedbear before you salvage Scrap Trap on Night 2, Afton won't appear at the salvaging desk, implying that he snuck inside using Nedbear. Now obviously humans can't fit inside most animatronics. The only class of animatronics that can accommodate humans are the Springlock animatronics. And of course, Fredbear is a Springlock suit. This is another parallel between the two. So yes, even if Nedbear isn't the strongest candidate, he's our best shot. So why would Golden Freddy be watching the player characters throughout the entire franchise up until Help Wanted? Well, I don't think it's about us. I think it's about Afton. Golden Freddy is looking for William Afton, the man who killed him, and he won't stop until he finds him. He got close during FNAF 3, but it's only in Pizza Sim that he gets his chance. Since Afton hid inside him in FNAF 6, Cassidy has a chance to fuse with him. When the pizza place burns down, Cassidy takes Afton with them into the depths of hell, ultimate custom night. Now, after all these years, he can show his true form. Now, he can punish Afton for the rest of eternity. When Old Man Consequences tells Cassidy to let go and pass on, they refuse. It's been too long. They won't let this opportunity slip away. This is the story of Golden Freddy. Furious soul refusing to pass on, always chasing the man who killed him, knowing no rest. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, it's all just a theory. These are my ideas, and you're allowed to disagree with them. As always, like, subscribe, and never stop overthinking.